68's tutorial series. Um, today we're going to cover how to connect to the Jaguars through CAN. Uh, we'll go through uh, everything from making the cables to programming them, um, setting up their device IDs. You're going to need to be able to talk to the Jaguars through serial. So either uh, you'll need an old laptop or a USB to serial adapter. Uh, obviously, you're going to need a, a black Jaguar. Um, these guys are used as a serial to CAN bridge. Um, so the serial will talk to the black Jaguar through uh, RS-232 and the black Jaguar will take care of um, formatting the messages to, to talk over CAN from there. Um, as far as making cables, um, we're going to use 6-pin, 4-conductor conductor uh, phone wire and 6-pin, six 6-conductor six uh, ends. You can use 6-pin, six 6-conductor six wire. We, just, we have 6-pin, uh, 4-conductor wire around, so uh, whatever you have available, make use of it. You're also going to need, uh, I think, 100 ohm resistors. Those will terminate the ends. And crimpers. Uh, for making the cable that talks to the serial, you're going to want to pick up uh, a couple parts from Radio Shack or online. Uh, we're we're going to use today just a, a DB9 connector that has uh, pins in the back you can solder to. You're also going to need a 12 volt power supply to supply power to the uh, Jaguar while you're programming it. The power distribution board will work fine for this, um, or if you have a 12 volt bench power supply you can use that. We're going to use the, the uh, power distribution board for today. As you can see, CAN bus wiring is set up in a daisy chain fashion. Wiring up the devices in this fashion can be pretty powerful. Um, as you can see, it greatly simplifies the wiring. Um, you don't have to have uh, discrete PWM cables going back to a central location on your robot. Also, crimping the phone jacks is much simpler than making PWM cables. Um, phone cable is really cheap nowadays, and you get yourself a few ends and a good crimper, and you're in business. This is the configuration that our team used for the 2011 season uh, for all of our motor controllers. And we did not have any failures throughout the entire season. The first step to getting your computer talking to the Jaguars is to create a serial cable. Um, you're going to need a female DB9 connector. Uh, I'm going to use one that uh, has solder connections in the back, so I'll be soldering my phone cable directly into the female connector. Um, I'd recommend getting a different style connector uh, similar to this one uh, where you'd have a female DB9 connection that goes to a six pin, six conductor uh, RJ11 connection, so a phone jack on the back. Um, these guys are a little easier to wire up and um, you'll probably have better experience with it, uh, the hold up better in the long run. Soldering the foam cable to the back of these DB9 connections is going to leave you with um, you know, a, a pretty poor joint. Um, it will probably over time will end up breaking. Uh, this is just what I have lying around. Uh, the wiring is the same for both, so all the pin connections are the same regardless of what style connector you're making. Just so you can see the inside of these connections, usually you'll have a bunch of wires that are already hooked up to the jack on the back of the connector. Um, all I have to do is insert the pins uh, from the jack into the assembly uh, for the DB9 connection.
All right, for, for my serial cable that's going to connect to my computer, I'm going to use a four conductor wire. Uh, all you need in this cable are three conductors. I've gotten rid of the red one. Um, for the wiring, I'm going to hook um, the black wire to pin three on the DB9 connector, the green wire to pin five on the DB9, and the yellow wire to pin two on the DB9. If you're going to be soldering to the DB9 connection, be careful um, because the pins can overheat the plastic and they will melt. Remember, I was saying that if you're going to solder the cables this way, the joints are going to be really fragile. Um, so, if you are making a cable in this fashion, uh, I would suggest putting some hot glue across these to provide some strain relief. That way your cable will last a little longer. Alright, so the next step is to make the other end of the cable. Um, what we'll need is a 100 ohm resistor with lead soldered onto the end of it. Um, we, we use some extra foam cable to do so. Uh, you're going to want to use uh, uh, leads on the end of the resistor like this so that you get a better uh, crimp. We found that the uh, legs of the resistor can short together inside the connector um, and they don't hold as well as crimping to uh, the wire. Uh, so the resistor will go in the middle two pins of the RJ11 jack or the six pin, six conductor jack. And starting at the black wire, we'll call that, well that's going to go to pin one. Um, and yellow will go to pin six. So those two pairs go to the outsides. Just like that. I want to verify that all the wires are at the end of the jack before you crimp. Starting at pin one, should be black, red, middle two will be your uh, resistor, then the outside two, green, yellow. Alright, so we have our USB to serial adapter plugged into the laptop. Uh, we're going to hook in our custom cable and we plug the end with the terminating resistor into the hole in the Jaguar that has a IO, IO net uh, writing next to it. Alright, now the last bit you need to do is to hook in your terminating resistor um, into the other port. And that just lets the Jaguar know that there's no more CAN devices on the note, on the, uh, the bus. Alright, so we've hooked up our Jaguar to the serial port. And now it's time to test our cable out. So we open up the BECOM application. Hook up power to your Jaguar. And you should get a flashing light. Um, the way that this app works, uh, you select the COM port that you're connecting to here at the top. Um, once you see the lights flashing on the Jaguar, click enumerate. If your cables are all made correctly, you should see uh, board IDs of all the Jags in the chain listed here. Right now, this is a brand new black Jaguar. Um, so what we're going to do is load a new firmware and uh, set the board ID. So by default all of the Jaguars, the tans and the blacks, come with the board ID of one. So uh, it's always a good idea to, to change that to uh, something that's not one. So I'm just going to set this one to 10. You want to be ready 
uh, to press the user button on the Jaguar. Uh, so I'm going to click the assign button and then you have five seconds to, to press the user button. Alright, so click the assign button and press the user button. And you see it took the new board ID. The reason why you have to click the user button is uh, if you're trying to assign a user ID to one Jaguar in a series of many Jaguars on the CAN bus, so you've got a bunch daisy chained together, uh, you, need, you need to tell uh, the program you know, which device it is that you want to change the ID for. All right, so now that we've set the board ID to something other than one, we're gonna update the firmware. Uh, I've got the Black Jag 93 firmware from the beta test on my desktop. I'm gonna use that. Click the update button. All right, and then when the Jaguar comes back up, you should see the new firmware ID uh, 93 loaded. All right, so now let's, so that one should be all set to go. Um, there's other tabs in here that allow you to monitor um, you know, the settings. So uh, you can put it, you can do some testing and put it into a specific uh, mode and then uh, issue commands to it. So if we did a voltage value, 59. See that there's a active command being sent to the Jaguar. See that light blinking. Uh, and if we were to change the voltage value in the other direction, so negative 59, you can see that the light's blinking in the other direction. Alright, so there's some options there for testing out different functions of the Jaguar without having to write code. All right, so if you want to talk to multiple Jags over the CAN bus, the way that you wire it up, you've got to make um, a little jumper cable. And I'll show you how to make that in a minute, but basically you're talking to a single Jag, you've got a cable in and then a terminating resistor. Um, take that terminating resistor out and then on the right hand connector you're going to plug in the little jumper wire that you make. All right, so connection on the left would be your inputs if you want to think of it that way and then your outputs down the chain to your next input and then wherever you end up on the, in the chain uh, you have a terminating resistor, 100 ohms. So let's make that cable now. What we'll need for this is two six pin six conductor or six pin four conductor cable ends. A length of cable. Now this should be the, the length to jump between wherever your two jags are in your robot. And then crimpers. First thing, you strip both ends. Alright, now if you're using a six conductor cable, just fill the holes in the connector. If you have four conductor cable like I do, uh, you're going to want to skip that first connection so the middle four pins are what's going to be filled. The outer two are empty. The outer two on the JAGs are the connections that are used for uh, serial communications on the DB9 connector. And they're not wired up on the uh, output size. Alright, so uh, you can wire it either way. I'm going to have black to on pin two. Alright, now on the other end, you want to have the wiring the same. 
Uh, so if you put black on pin 2, then you want to put black on pin 2 on this end as well. So, when you're done, you should be able to hold both ends together and see that the, the pinout is identical. Or if you were to straighten the cable out, uh, one side has a connector up, the other one has a connector down. Pretty straightforward. This will be the same way that you wire Jaguars on your robot. Uh, put power back on. If we come back to our BTC com application and click the enumerate button, now, talk to the Jags again, get a list of all the Jags on the, on the CAN bus. You can see that there's two listed under board ID. So let's change the, the one with the board ID of one. That's the new one we just plugged in. We're going to assign it a new ID of 11. I'll show you on the Jaguar this time. So when we click the assign button, we need to press the user button here. So I'll click assign, and there's five seconds, press the user button. Just use a paper clip or something. Okay. And then assignment has completed. We should have a 10, which was the first one we did, and 11 is the next one we did. Uh, you can see right now that 10 has version 93 of the firmware. 11 has the stock firmware from the factory. So let's reflash it. Go up under File, Update Firmware. While we're connected, this is true for when you're connected on the C Rio 2, you'll get a steady status LED on the Jaguars. Now, if you were to close the application, then those LEDs would blink. When, when you've lost comms, the status LEDs blink amber.